Welcome back. We have a brand new brand and this is their first design. I can't wait to show y'all. I've already uh, carried this for a little bit and checked it out. This right here is the Legion Steel Asir. I don't know if I'm saying that right, which uh, the name in Old Norse means Spear of God. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I like the original name. And these are going to be a pre-order. Um, you have a nice premium knife here, and we're going to go through it. Um, I'm going to give you my, the, the things I think are great about the knife, what I, I would like to see a little different. And uh, depending on whether they want me to do the testing with it or not, will be if I do another video. Uh, but if they don't want me to do a testing with it, then I, you know, I can give you all my overview now. So we have a pretty full size EDC knife right here. It's coming in with an overall length of 7.865. So nice overall size. Your blade length is coming in at 3.5 inches. You got a nice sheep's foot of CPM 20 CV steel. Very attractive looking blade in my opinion. And it's gonna be excellent for doing utility cutting. You can get that tip down on something for drag cuts or if you need to do a pull cut excellent and just cutting breaking up cardboard and stuff like that now the edge cants up so it's going to give you more of like a belt more belly feeling but you should be good making long cuts you may you know start to slide out once you get towards that tip but uh, overall i think it's an attractive looking blade this particular one is a black wash finish. It's a PVD coating on it, and I think it looks nice. I like this nice top swedge. And the designer of this knife is Marshall Noble of Noble Knives. If you don't know who he is, he's the one that designed the uh, Concept Goblin and Mini Goblin. And if you went to Blade Show, you've probably met him because he worked uh, the Concept booth, uh, I think, the last three years, maybe more. I don't know. Uh, this is the full-size goblin, and he also had the mini goblin, and then he had um, a design with Kaiser. Uh, that that name's kind of escaping me because it was an older design, but um, I like a lot of his stuff. He also makes custom knives as well, and this he's one of the guys behind Legion Steel. If you want to know more about the brand and what they're about i'm going to have all their information in the description if you want to go pre-order this i will have that as well down in the description you can also get it in a non-coated blade so if coated blades aren't your thing then they also come in non-coated this one has a flat grind on here comes down decently thin i don't know exactly what the edge bevel is on it um, it's around 15 thousandths back here to about right here. Then it starts to thicken up to around 20 thousandths. I'm not exactly sure what it is at the tip, but that's going to be a lot thicker because of the grind height. You can actually feel the thickness difference. I would have much preferred a hollow grind here just so you, you know, it doesn't thicken up as fast because after you sharpen this a few times, it's going to start thickening up rather quickly because of that short height. But, you know, it, it just depends on how often you sharpen your knives. You can see the Noble Knives logo right there. I always liked his logo. And I'm not sure if that's just the model number right there. And there's your blade steel marking right there. I don't know the OEM. I'm guessing his concept being that, you know, he's already has a relationship with them. Um, it kind of feels like that, but I don't know if he says that or not. And I won't speculate. You do have a sharpening choil. However, it just barely clears that plunge kind of see the plunge line comes down right there so I'm not 100% certain it may start to widen up after that first sharpening but you can widen it yourself if you needed to because you don't have to worry they have an internal stop pin you don't have to worry about anything uh, coming in contact with that stop pin so that's always nice to see at this moment I can't really speak on how the blade performed or how well the uh, the edge held up uh, because I, I didn't do any testing with it, like I said, because I, I don't want I don't ever just if somebody sends a knife in, I don't ever just test it without their permission, especially you know prototypes and stuff like that. You do have a road jimping, however, it's pretty much aesthetics only because I overshoot that jimping, and even if I did pinch back right here, it doesn't really give me much grip. I'm guessing because of this coating right here, but I don't really that doesn't bother me in the least because I got a nice flat spot to leg your thumb there. Now let's take a look at the deployment and the action of the knife. Now you have a very minimal flipper tab, which I'm okay with, but there's no jimping on this side. I w you got some jimping down here. I'm guessing in the open position, that's to help so you don't slide up. 
but uh, being that you had that minimal flipper tab and it's a little bit rounded right there I, I have found myself slipping off of it a few times and um, if you put your finger on that lock bar that minimal flipper tab with no jumping you're gonna you're gonna miss that flip but if you keep your fingers off the lock bar which I, I'm holding the knife like this oh, <laughs> it comes out you know rather easily depending you know if you get a good grip on it i'm not the biggest fan of flippers in general and especially of the minimal flippers uh, because of that too they just hurt my fingers my fingers a little bit more beat up than the average person but you know once you get the hang of it it, it, it might be fine but like i said that coating right there you can kind of see it's rounded over so it's a little bit slippery i would have loved to see that have some jumps right there now i don't know if they're changing i don't know if this is the final production i know they're they're doing something with the lock bar i think they're extending the lock bar if i remember correctly other than that i don't know if this you know if this is uh, production ready or not but like i said that is pretty slippery on the flipper tab um i, I gotta give my honest opinions on it and this is just stuff i'm i see now, this, the handle area is absolutely stunning in my opinion. You have these two nice uh, inlays of shred carbon fiber. Hopefully that's coming across nicely on the video because it looks stunning through the viewfinder. Very, very nice. Now, they're not completely flush. You can see like a little raised spot right there and a little bit of raised spot right on in front of that pivot right there as well. The rest of it is pretty nice and flush. I'm guessing that's the contouring, or maybe it just popped up a little bit right there. Uh, not the end of the world. It's not a deal breaker for me. It's not like it's catching my finger or anything. Just something I, I noticed uh, off first glance. So you got those two right here, and I'm very happy to see that they did put one on the back side as well because I just I hate to see, you know, just inlay work on the back. It just kind of throws me off. Um, you do have a pivot collar. I don't know if that's titanium or not. You have stainless steel hardware with a blue coating on it. That's what really makes me believe it is probably a concept. They do that a lot. You have a Torx T8 for the pivot. Unfortunately, you have Torx T6 for the body screws. I would have much rather see those at least all T8. I'm not a fan of T6. I do like this little, this little pocket right here. Just gives it an added little flare. Love the way this handle cants down like this. They did a good job of contouring the scales and softening these edges. Hopefully, y'all can see that nice soft edge right there. That uh, definitely will help. And uh, the action, whenever you do flip it out, though, is pretty nice. You do have a little landing pad right here for after the flip. And it is riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent. So it's uh, nice and smooth. Another bummer that I noticed is, is that it's only tip for right hand tip up carry only. I don't know if there's left handed versions or not. You'd have to check the website. Uh, but I do love the pocket clip. It is a mill titanium pocket clip that goes with the lines of the knife. And it's blind screwed, meaning it's screwed from the inside. So it keeps that very clean looking. You don't have extra hardware. You have that little milled spot there that kind of goes with this milling right there. And the spring tension on it is excellent. It's uh, very easy to pull that up. Not overly easy, but I, th I think it should be fine. If you catch that on a seatbelt, it may spring it out. But it's titanium. If, as long as you don't crack it, you should be able to, you know, get it back down. Goes in and out of the pocket nicely. You have enough, uh, enough underneath there, a ramp underneath there to get it underneath your pockets. And it's not deep carry, but it sits fairly deep in the pocket. As you see, it, that's all you have really sticking out of the pocket. Now, one cool thing about these knives are they're, they're only going to make 100 of each version. I know there's this one, the nine coated, and I don't know what other ones they have, but they're only going to be making 100 of them. And once they sell out, they're going to retire the design. So if you're somebody who likes to collect, you know, the things that are limited, this is your chance. They will, it'll be a very limited design. I think it's a nice looking design. And, um, you know, initial feeling in hand is nice. I did kind of push it into some woods. I didn't want to actually do any of my normal stuff yet, like I said, because they didn't tell me I could or not. I was just trying to get a feel for it in the hand. And for the most part, it was fairly comfortable. I did notice that uh, it gets kind of thin up here and, and right here. And whenever I was squeezing down, I could kind of feel that. Um, and I did notice this choil area is a little small, so it was kind of, you know, pinching into my finger. Not so bad with mine because I don't have really thick fingers, so it fits in there okay. But if you had 
you know, fat sausage fingers, you might be on this corner right there. Um, so I don't know. I would have liked to see this widen up just a hair. Um, <clears throat> but like I said, I can't really speak on the ergos as much without actually doing testing because, you know, squeezing is one thing. Actually cutting into something is a whole different ball game. Let's close it up. You have a almost, you got about a three-quarter length titanium backspacer. <clears throat> it kind of dips down right there. And it keeps your finger from com coming in contact with that edge in the closed position. So that's always nice. You have a hidden lanyard pin back here. I love that they didn't put an extra hole or anything right there for the lanyard people. Your blade is perfectly centered. Outstanding. Can't catch it in the closed position at all. Let's take a look at the inside. You have a good bit of internal milling on the top and on the bottom, even though you already have the milling right here to try to help keep down the weight and I'm sure to balance the knife. Let's see where that balance point is. So yeah, the balance point's about right where you'd want it to be. Um, and it feels light in hand. Get a quick weight in grams first. 105.1 grams or 3.70 ounces. So not bad. Pretty Actually, I think it's pretty darn good. Now let's take a look at the lockup. The knife is sitting, I'd say at around, what is that, about 40% or so, maybe 50%. It looks like you have a decent lock geometry. It's not too steep. Hopefully y'all can see that it is a little dark there. Do you have a hardened lock bar insert right there? You can see, and also the over travel. Hopefully you can see that little tab right there to keep you from overspringing this lock in this direction. <clears throat> the access to the lock bar is good. This comes down a little bit lower. You have a nice little chamfer, and I find it rather easily to disengage. Sorry if y'all can hear the kids screaming in the background. I got all my grandkids here. But uh, I can get to that lock rather easily, no matter which way I grab it. It's not uncomfortable either. And let's see. Absolutely no play up or down. No play whatsoever. And absolutely no play to side to side. This thing's got a very, very tight lockup and uh, still rather smooth with the deployment. So nicely done. Now I'm going to give you all a few size comparisons since y'all have never seen this knife before. You have the Ontario Rat Model 1 and 2. It's in the middle of those two. Next we have the Spyderco PM2 and Power 3. It's more in line with the PM2. Next we have the Concept Goblin XL and the Concept Fenrir. Pretty good size references, the Spyderco Manix 2 and the Spyderco Smock. All right, my nitpicks and complaints without using it, like I said. Uh, I would love to see a hollow grind on here just to make it a little bit thinner and have a little bit more sharpening life, especially up here in the front. But, you know, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal when it's 20 CV steel. Um, and the sharpening tool, I would like to see that widened up a little bit because uh, it, I think it's going to start to widen up after the first sharpening. I'm not certain on that because I haven't sharpened it, but it just looks like it. But something you can widen up yourself because that stop pin is not in the way. Uh, jimping, uh, you know, if you if you if you are a jimping person, like I said, maybe it, it'd been nice to have the the road jimping extended out to here and a little bit more grippy, especially on this coated version. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the minimal flipper tabs. They just hurt my fingers and not having any jimping on there and that being rounded over just makes it a little bit difficult not to slip off. Um, but I'd say I probably got it about 75% of the time as long as I kept my finger off this lock bar. Um, I also would have loved to see it tap for lefties. Like I said, I don't know if they have left-handed versions or not, but it would have been nice to see it. If not, I would have loved to see T8 hardware throughout on this like i said they have a few high spots on the inlays not the end of the world but it's is it's a premium price tag on the knife you are getting exclusivity you know once they're gone they're gone so you know it depends on if that's something you like in a knife uh, i think the overall design is stunning and um, i like it you know i like i like the design i like the fact that you know, I could have something that not a lot of people are going to have. That's not something you usually see that much. And I think it's cool that we have a new brand coming around. Uh, they had a lot of cool stuff on their site. I would I would definitely suggest y'all go check out their site. Even if you don't plan on picking one up, just go check it out. They're doing a lot of cool things on their site, like trying to promote other people's stuff as well. And I thought that was very cool. But like I said... This is a premium price tag. These knives are coming in at $335.
So, you know, if you're not into premium knives or any of those things that I said, if those are deal breakers for you, then this is not the knife for you. But if this is something for you, I think it's a well-made knife. I think it's a very attractive knife. It's going to be, you know, exclusivity to, you know, the, the people that actually were able, that are able to pick one up. And that's always a cool thing. And you can, right now, you can go on their site. You can pre-order it for the full price and uh, be done with it. Or you can do the reservation deposit. If you want to reserve one of a spot for $150, you can do that. It will reserve one for you. And then you pay the, pay the remaining balance once these knives are ready to ship. So, like I said... If I'm not, if they, they don't want me to do any testing with it, then this this is my uh, overview of it. I can't really call call it a review if I'm not doing my normal testing on the knife. I to me that's just an overview, and that's that's fine too. I'm okay with that. Like I, you know, I was able to carry it. I was able to, you know, get a decent feel on it. I can't really speak on ergos all that much unless I start doing cutting with it. Uh, it feels decent initially in hand. Like I said, this spot is a little bit thin, um, but I, I don't know if that would cause any pain, you know, pushing down hard into something. It didn't by just barely pushing, you know, pushing into the wood, but that's all I did because I didn't want to mess it up at all because this knife is going to a lot of other channels. I think I'm sending it to uh, my buddy Jared, Needs Knives, next. So if you want to hear his opinion on the knife as well, check out his review and all the other guys that will be getting it. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.